Hi guys, it's Steph here from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Books Beside My Bed video. For those of you who are new here, I film one of these every week where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading. For those of you who are very familiar with the series, welcome back. This is my reading week from the 1st to the 7th of September. I am filming this a little bit early in that I am filming it on Saturday when I would normally film it on Sunday because I'm going to be out for most of Sunday and I want to make sure that this actually gets filmed. So whatever I read today will be rolled over into next week's wrap up. This week has pretty much been one of the craziest weeks yet so far this term in terms of work and everything else that's going on in my life. So while I've done a lot of reading, not a whole lot else has been done with the exception of attending the book blogger breakfast as part of the Melbourne Writers Festival this morning and having a grand time. I've got a video that I'm going to put up hopefully on Wednesday or on Friday, I haven't decided yet, that will talk a little bit about that experience and some of the goodies that I got as a result and it was just honestly a really nice way to start the weekend chatting books with a whole bunch of very lovely lovely ladies. Onto the books this week I read eight different things of varying descriptions. I read six adult books and two young adult books, five were full-length novels, one, two were novellas and one was a graphic novel or graphic trade. The first book that I read this week was The Wren Hunt by Mary Watson. This was a 2018 release from Bloomsbury. I gave it three out of five stars. I picked this book up because I did receive the second book in this series unsolicited from Bloomsbury which I'm going to talk about a little bit later on in this video and I didn't realize initially that it was a second book and I think you could possibly read it the second book without reading this one but I would probably recommend reading the first book just to have a bit of an understanding going into the second book. That said this was not my favorite. It was it was perfectly fine how it was. Uh, it is sort of an urban fantasy style young adult book and the main character Ren Silk is tormented every year by some of the local boys who chase her into the forest. The boys are known as judges and Ren herself is an auger and these two groups of people have been at odds with each other for many many years. At the start of the book Ren is sent undercover as an intern at the Harkness Foundation which is the sort of the headquarters of the judges and in particular their leader and she's there to gather information on something that will help the augers regain their powers and therefore control. This one was really hard to sort of get into and I think that was probably why I can't rate it higher than a three. It was just there was a lot of information but not necessarily as much world building as I would have expected in a book like this. You're sort of just thrown in and expected to understand it which I don't always have an issue with but it just this one it felt very very slow. Ren herself is a really interesting character. She's quite strong and stubborn and she's sarcastic and I really liked that about her but overall the book itself was just fine. Then I read Playboy's Lesson by Melanie Milburn. This is one of the books that I was reading as part of the Melbourne Writers Festival to read a book by some of the panelists that I'll be seeing on Sunday. It is a 2014 release from Mills and Boone. I gave it three out of five stars and it is the second book in the Chatsfield book series. It follows playboy Luca Chatsfield who gets up to all sorts of mischief and decide and tries to cause as much scandal as he possibly can until one day he's finally called on it by his family and sent off to help out the family business which is a series of luxurious hotels at their Monte Carlo hotel and he is assigned to work with Princess Charlotte from Monte Carlo as she helps organize her older sister's wedding and she is very buttoned up straight laced very unimpressed with his playboy ways and he decides that he's going to try and force her to have fun and it just sort of goes from there. It was light, it was entertaining, it was ridiculous and it was three stars. I also read Packbound by Liesl Layton. Again this was for the Melbourne Writers Festival. Liesl Layton is one of the panelists at one of the things that I'm seeing on Sunday. It is a 2018 release from Escape Publishing and I gave this one three out of five stars as well. This is book one in the Packbound series Again it is urban fantasy, well urban fantasy slash paranormal romance and this one is between witches and were. And the premise is that 500 years earlier the witches and the were were in danger of dying out and so the witches decided to create a pact with the were and this helped to fend off a curse that the were were facing as well as provide security for the witches. And that's sort of the background story and we begin in the modern day with the main character Sky Collins who 
is a witch but has basically spent her entire life cut off from magic and her magical heritage by her grandparents who claimed that it was for her own safety until she is approached by the Alpha of Pac McVale, Jason McVale, and he recognizes her as their Pax witch. The fact that she hasn't used her magic is causing her a lot of problems and this, is, this book really is about how does she uncover the truth about her, her heritage, how does she find the strength to learn how to use her magic and then the romance side that comes along with all sorts of paranormal romance books. It, it was okay. I think I have been spoiled with the Psy Changeling series and also the Kate Daniels series in that my expectations for urban fantasy and paranormal romance is really really high and this one just didn't meet that. So it was perfectly fine but just not my fave. Then I read The Wicker Light by Mary Watson which is book two in the Ren Hunt series. This was sent to me by Bloomsbury for review so thank you very much to them. This is a 2019 release from Bloomsbury and I gave this four out of five stars. I, I like this so much better than the Ren Hunt. I can't even explain how much I like this more. I'm gonna try but I don't think I can do it. The premise of this one, so this takes place pretty much straight after the events of the Ren Hunt which is why you probably need to read that one first. I wish I could say that you could just pick this one up, but I think it would make more sense if you read the first one. And it follows two different main characters, David, who was one of the antagonists in the first book, and Zara, who is a new character and she is an outsider. So in the first book where we're introduced to the two feuding groups, the, the judges and the augurs, Zara is not involved in any of that. Her family has moved to the town of Kilshamble because they are trying to rebuild their lives together after her father has an affair. They've moved to the town and a few months up and a while after moving to the town her Zara's older sister is found dead in the village green. No one really knows the story behind how or why she died. It's been blamed on drugs but Zara knows that something was not right in the days leading up to her sister's death and so she decides to try and uncover what is actually happening. This causes her to cross paths with David. David is a judge and he has quite a rocky position within the judge organization and he's beginning to question what he believes is right and what is wrong and through his relationship with Zara and eventually helping her to understand exactly what's going on and how this feud between these two groups of magical people contributed to the death of her sister and it was just it was really interesting this one I think because we had the perspective of an outsider we had to find out information it had to be included and the world building had to be so much higher than in the first book I think that's what made this book different but I did really enjoy this so if there is another book I will probably be very interested in finding out what happens but possibly only if it involves Zara and David. Then I read Andromeda's Fall by William C. Dietz this was this is a military sci-fi book that was published in 2014 by Titan Books. It is book one in the prequel Legion series. The basic premise begins with a bloody coup happening on Earth. So this is set in the future and people are in space doing all sorts of things and on Earth there is an emperor and his sister decides to stage a coup and it's quite bloody and she takes over and the, her first act of business is to essentially assassinate every single friend or collaborator from her brother's ruling time and this includes the family of Kat Culleta who is a very wealthy socialite. She escapes from this and decides to join the Legion which is sort of like an official band of mercenaries who fight using androids or cyborgs or something like that. Anyway the majority of the book is her going through training, her trying to decide how and if she's going to take out take revenge on the people who killed her family. We don't get quite that far in by the end of this book. Obviously there's a whole lot of other stories going on with this character. Yeah it was it was just an interesting read. I, I think at times I felt like it was just going through the motions in that it was just going through well she did this and then she did this and then this happened and and so on and so forth but I think if you're talking about a prequel series then perhaps that's probably what it's going to be a bit like but it was interesting and I haven't read a military sci-fi for a little while so it was nice to get back into that genre. I also picked up Daredevil Volume 1 by Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen. This was this trade bind up was released in 2008 by Marvel and I gave it three out of five stars but the stories in here are originally from 1979 to 1983 so they're they're quite old in terms of 
um, the actual stories. You've got a whole lot of different characters that pop up in here. I won't talk too much about it. It is Daredevil. So the characters that you might see in it, aside from Daredevil and Foggy and all of the familiar characters, you've got Elektra, you have the Kingpin, you have Bullseye, Black Widow turns up in this, a whole lot of other characters. It was just fun to dive into some older stories that I haven't read before and to experience them. And then finally I read books four and five in the Ice Planet Barbarian series, which I don't think I've actually talked about on my channel. I have been reading them on and off. I think I always forget to talk about them. They are little sci-fi romance novella length books that are very steamy and are just delightfully hilarious in terms of I can't believe I'm reading this, but I am. And I'm not even sorry about it. They are by Ruby Dixon. The two books that I read this week were Barbarian Mine and Barbarian's Prize. And the basic premise of this entire series, which I found out, I think I found this series from a recommendation on under the Under the Covers YouTube channel. And then it seems like everyone is talking about it at the moment, especially since we just, since Smutathon was on, a lot of people were reading the first book. So it just seems like it's everywhere, but it is on Kindle Unlimited. So it's one of those things that you can pick up pretty quick, pretty quickly and easily. The basic premise is that a group of women have been kidnapped from Earth by the bad green aliens and then something happens and that ship crash lands on this planet that is covered in snow and ice and the girls quickly name it Not Hoth as a Star Wars reference which I just love. All bad aliens are killed but they are left on this planet and in order to survive they are taken in by this other alien race of giant blue aliens who all need to find a human mate which is just ridiculous but entirely hilarious and if you are an adult because these are very adult reads and you like sci-fi and you like romance. They're just highly entertaining. I don't, I can't even explain it. So that happened. I think I gave book four, four stars and book five, three stars. The Barbarian's Prize was not my favorite in the series. I just didn't particularly like the female lead. But aside from that, they were quick and easy reads and I am enjoying the series. So they'll, I will talk more about the other ser other books in the series when I read them. I just, I just need to remember to do it. So those are the physical books that I read this week, but there, you know, imagine there's other books there. In the comments below, let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them, or alternatively, let me know what you have been reading over the last seven days. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you are having a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.